Hi, you're listening to An Open Dialogue. I'm Violet Howe. And I'm Tadra Kandal. And depending on where you're listening, you might also be watching because we are both uh, video and an audio now. Anyway, we're coming so at some, like not all of your senses, but we're coming for a multitude of your senses. <laughs> yeah, we haven't you can't gotten... smell us or taste us, but you can see us and hear no, us. Or, or touch us. Well, you could touch a screen. I guess you could touch a screen. It wouldn't be yeah. quite the same thing, but no. anyway, we are really excited today because we are joined by um, Queen Empress of All She Surveys, uh, yeah. <laughs> Mel Jolly. That's her official title. That's her official title. Part. Yeah, she, uh, <laughs> she uh, will, she's a five-star life coach and um, uh, we're really excited to have her with us today. So welcome, Mel. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here and I'll pay you later for calling me that. So <laughs> I'll owe you a, I'll owe you something next time we're no, together. <laughs> you'll owe me an you'll owe me an almond joyous, but the yeah, right exactly. kind, the right kind, not the kind that they tried to pass off. Not on. the pineapple not, kind. Not that I'm bitter because I'm not. So who is Mel? That is the first question that a lot of you may be asking if you're used to us um, having authors and um, and other fun people on here. Uh, Mel is a fun person too. Yeah, and she, yeah, she, she is. Person. She is. She's a, she's a very fun person. Uh, Mel, uh, I first met Mel through uh, my association with Novelist Inc. Nink. Um, and I think that that tends to be a lot of our our, our uh, conversation bases, but um, happily I have gotten to know her a lot better over the years. And um, I, I uh, am, have only been enhanced. My life and my my uh, authorship and how I do things has has only been enhanced. I joke that I have a Mel voice in my head, and I'll text <laughs> her and say, "I just thought this," and it was Mel who said it. It was said in the Mel voice. So anyway, so um, Mel, tell us a little bit about you and about your history. Yeah. So uh, thanks, thanks again for having me. Yeah, I was so excited when we finally met in person, Tadra, and that was a couple years ago. And then Violet, same. When I got to meet you in person, uh, everything is so virtual these days that um, actually getting to see other humans and look in their actual eyeballs is so exciting. And touch them and smell them. And touch right. them. And, I don't recall smelling either of you, but I'm sure it well, happened. That's a good thing, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. If you went away with the impression of like, wow, I could really smell her, that would be that would probably not be true. a good thing. That's true. That's true. And you, you might not have tasted us, but you tasted the food that I prepared for you with my own hands. You did. And yes. I still am grateful for that, <laughs> Tadra, and thought that it was restaurant food. So, mm -hmm. you know, let's just all walk away from that moment knowing and I complimented you deeply. You did. You did. You complimented me deeply. We move on. <laughs> um, so I have been a freelancer for a thousand years, um, <laughs> 11 years. But but as I was thinking about this, I, I knew you were going to ask me like a little bit about my history. And I think that where I am today, you know, has been building up for my entire life. And I was deeply involved in the theater. When I was in um, high school and college, I actually have a bachelor's degree in theater performance. So, so I went to make believe school uh, <laughs> so that now I could be a life coach. Uh, no, but the thing is, when I was working with actors, I recognize that actors are just the most emotive people, right? Like they're just always, they always have a story. They're always trying to make people laugh. They're always trying to make people feel something. They're just so emotive. That was my natural setting. So I think later on, I naturally gravitated towards writers because writers will do the same thing, not necessarily always verbal, but they're always trying to evoke an emotion, right? Or they're always feeling something and they feel it like with a lot of feelings, which has just been fascinating to me because as an actor, I was a little bit on the outside because I loved being on the stage. But when we were not on the stage, I was like. More introverted. Tone it, tone it down, you guys. <laughs> like, whoa, take it down 10 notches. I was always the least funny person in the room. Um, unless I went to hang out with the tech people. <laughs> and then I was the funniest person in the room. <laughs> so I usually did like to spend time with the techies. 
<laughs> but um, eventually I gravitated towards writers and I became an author assistant. And that's kind of how, you know, put me on the path to meet both of you. True. I eventually started working with Nink and becoming like the conference wrangler. Like how, <laughs> how do we keep everybody working together and talking to each other and, and, and oh, moving this well train forward, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm pushy in like a loving way. I, I, I talk about giving like really loving kicks in the rear. So there you go. Um, that was a rambling version of me saying, I live in North Carolina now with my husband and my teenager and six animals, also known as the Jolly Zoo. That's right. And it's a nice mix of cats and dogs. And they also, uh, you know, we were saying about how sometimes animals come across your screen or, or make themselves known in other ways. And that happens. I really hope it's not going to happen uh, today. And if it does, I'm going to mute my microphone. You two are going to talk amongst yourselves <laughs> until, it does, until it, will it passes. Be perfectly normal for this yes. podcast because she yes. and I both have multiple animals yes. and they mm -hmm. typically make an appearance during the podcast. Yes, yes, yes they do. They, they, I think they're all like frustrated actors or, or they, yes. they just want the attention. They oh, like to bless. Yes. Yeah. I know. Right. So now I know that you had a, you You've had a lot of different fun jobs in the past. I so, have. Yeah, you've been, you've worked in a lot of different I've areas. been a carriage tour guide. Mm -hmm. That was a super fun job. I have been a library assistant. Mm -hmm. I've been a uh, money person at Lowe's, which literally means that I just counted all the money that came in <laughs> every day. Okay. Talk about dry skin problems. <laughs> uh, seriously. Weird things Job happen to my been. cuticles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also have been a production planning manager for a factory, for a fabric factory that made like um, the insides of sleeping bags and, and parachute fabric and other stuff. And I would plan, like New York would call me and they'd be like, Mel, we need this style. Tell us when we can have it. And I would tell them when they could have it. And then I'd schedule it through the whole plant. Yeah. And this was, this was all before I was 28. Wow. So <laughs> this was all preparing you for. I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. Right. And that, that leads us. How did you become a coach? How did you become what you are now? Yeah. So when I was in the factory job, at that point, I had made like leap after leap after leap, job after job after job. Not because I wasn't a good employee, but because I kept moving. And I was super unhappy. Like, I did not like that job. If anybody's ever had a job where you find, like, you you know where your places are that you can go cry and nobody will find you, that was the way that that job was for me. <laughs> I, you know, cried every day and I came home every day and was miserable. And my husband was like, something's got to give, like something's <laughs> got to give. You can't be this miserable all the time. So it's still, even with him saying that, it still kind of took me years, several years to get my life on track. And what it ultimately took was me saying to myself, like sitting myself down and going, okay, this is my rock bottom. This is it. And I think that we kind of have to make that decision because um, otherwise you can just keep slipping down Yep. because for several years I've been thinking, this is it. No, oh, this is probably this. We're here now. Right. Because I was just waiting at that point. I was waiting to hit bottom and then I was waiting for, I don't know, something to save me and start lifting me back up. And, and, and the whole time you're waiting to hit bottom, your life is happening that mm -hmm. whole time. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I uh, probably took about three years on a downhill slide and then I hit 30 and I was like, okay, sounds like it's time for me to decide that this is bottom. And so I made a decision on uh, December 31st, 2014, that I was done being negative and that I was going to become a positive person. I had no idea how that was gonna happen. I spent all of January 1st sobbing. Which seems like a great way. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. My, my poor husband and all this, right? Um, spent the whole day sobbing. Later on, 
I realized that that was a grieving point for me. Mm -hmm. So what had happened was I had made a real decision that I was going to kill off that version of Mel. That version of Mel was done. And I didn't know this new version that I was going to become, but I had finally decided for real that it was going to happen. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I think once you make a decision, you start moving. You have it. no choice but to to find right. it. Like you start finding the answers. So I yeah, found a book. Making the decision almost like puts you in motion, like propels it, you. And for me, that's what it always takes. I really, I truly have to decide this is it. Like writers, you talk about like maybe the doorway of no return, or I know there's several names for it, but the character goes through and then they, there's no going back to their old past. This is just like when this sounds morbid, but like, just like if you've ever lost somebody, there's a very clear dividing line in your life of before and after. So I was losing that version of Mel and there was a line before and after. And in that journey of several years, like reading books and like seeking out help and, and really turning myself into a positive person, um, I, I realized that that time period could have been a lot shorter <laughs> if there'd been some kind of resource that was like, this is how you get unstuck. This is how you get your life back on track. This is how you get your act together. This is how you figure out what you want. So I compiled all those things into a course. It was my like my journey, which took me about five years. I compiled it into an eight week course so that hopefully I could save other people time. Um, so I created Unlock Your Five Star Future. And then from that, I started working with people individually. And I realized that I love it, right? I love talking with people. And I have this unique ability, which one of my clients just pointed out to me the other day. She said, never underestimate your ability to ask the right questions. Right. That's a gift. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And it, I know it, it's, it is a gift. Like, and it is natural. Like, it is how my brain works. And then once I began to lean into that, right, I became a better listener. And I, I got better, like, piecing things together that people had said over a period of time. So all that all that ultimately turned into, you know, this course that I have and then the coaching that I can do with my students, which I love. But that's why Tadra had to call me a five star life coach, because it's really all about <laughs> creating the five star version of your life. That's right. That's right. Because Why would we want anything less? Why do you want four and a half stars? Mm -hmm. Right. 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 And I went. I went with stars, I think, because I'd been working with authors for so long, right? And it's like reviews, reviews, reviews. What do you want? Five stars. Yeah. Of course. A lot of stuff. That's yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, I know that you have this concept of um, what you call future you. So can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah. Like, tell me, like, what is future you and why should we care about her? Sure. Um, so... Eventually, one of the things that I figured out is that past you, and I shouldn't say I figured this out all from scratch. One day somebody said to me, oh, I always try to help out future me. Or I always, you know, think about this thing that past me did. And I started putting it together. There's three right. versions of you, right. right? There's past you, anything before this moment, five minutes ago, an hour ago, getting ready for the podcast, you, and, you know, adorable little two-year-old you. That's all past you. Present you is just the you in this moment, right now. And then future you is, you know, an hour from now, gonna eat lunch you, five years from now you, a hundred years from now you, I don't know how old you're gonna be, but. <laughs> 85. <laughs> Todd knows I'm bad with ages, so 85 is the max yeah. age that I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so these versions of you, right? So I started putting this idea together and I realized that the life that I'm currently living, is created or was created by past me. So last night past me made my smoothie for me because she knew that today me doesn't have time for a lunch break, right? So liquid lunch that she can drink on her next phone call. Um, after me in college learned all kinds of stuff that present me is using right now, right? The power in this is now realizing present you is creating future you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And once once you once you acknowledge that, 
there's huge power in it because all of a sudden you have influence over tomorrow. You have influence over right. a week from now or an influence over 10 years from now. Everything I, becomes more purposeful. I, I, people always talk about um, acting with intention or living with intentionality. Like intention is a very, it's a very like buzzword, especially in personal growth. Well, I was thinking, how do I make intention more like, how do I make it make more sense to me? Mm. So, oh, okay. What does future me need me to do today? What does future right. me need, you know, what kind of favor can I do for her? What, what does she need me to set up right now? And if I don't have any clue what future me wants, then I, I got to make that up. You know what I mean? Like I have to create that. I have to pull it out of myself. Well, I think it was a light bulb moment for me. But at one point you said, you know, a lot of people look at what they want their future to be but they don't, they're not acting like it. They, they say, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. Or I'd love to do this. But, but at the same time, they're, they're, they're not taking things. active steps. Right. It. Or, yeah. or sometimes they're doing things that are actively w without intention, probably, but actively sabotaging right. those steps too, you know? Yeah. And sometimes it's purposeful sabotage. So mm -hmm. I've had yeah. people tell me, um, and I'm guilty of this, right? So, but I've had people tell me that, uh, one of my classes was a huge light bulb moment for them because they would literally have the thought that's future me's problem. That future me will have to figure that out. Right. I used to um, <laughs> use my credit card and think of it. Literally, I'd swipe it and call it the worry about it later card. Right. <laughs> so all I was doing was setting future me up to fail. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I'd have this vision, like future me doesn't have credit card debt. Right? <laughs> but then here I am like swipe, swipe. <laughs> and so I think sometimes we expect future us. Like, so we, we, we're good at visualizing, you know, some people are really good at visualizing. They visualize this bright, beautiful future where you have the beach house and you're a New York times bestselling author and, and you know, your kids are also kind to each other and whatever, whatever the vision is, right? You have 18 cats instead of only three. I don't know. <laughs> but whatever the vision is, you know, future me is like, oh, she's so calm and she's so zen and she doesn't get stressed out. It's like they expect that version of them to just pop out of a box one day. <laughs> wake up like, one day. I'm here. I'm here. Congratulations. I keep waiting to wake up one day and be like physically fit and like lean. But yeah, yeah I, without that's the a perfect example. Future you doesn't suddenly become that way. Yeah. Yeah. True. Huh. Yeah. So, well, how do we do our best for future? you like what are what are things that we need to do or things we need to consider to make sure that we're setting future you up for success rather than failure yeah so um I'll, i'm gonna offer a couple of different suggestions and the first okay. one I've got is my pen ready i know <laughs> i know how you like to take notes pilot and i know that my notes are never sufficient i tried to share my notes with you once and you're like this didn't make sense <laughs> What is this shorthand? <laughs> what is this? Okay. So, okay. What was the question? No, how can you set future you up for success? So the first thing I want to address is if this is all totally, totally new to you. And if you feel like you're in a place where you're drowning, because that's a terrible place to be. Mm -hmm. And I have certainly many times over found myself in a uh, fight, flight, or freeze mode. Right. And for me, it's always freeze. So when I get truly overwhelmed, I'll know that I'm overwhelmed because I'll be laying on the floor. <laughs> That's where I go. Like I will lay down and I will be staring at the ceiling and then a dog face will be like right here in my <laughs> face. And that's my light bulb moment to go, okay, Mel, you are overwhelmed. You need to, to start doing some of the things that you do to combat overwhelm. <clears throat> and so if you're in this place where you're in fight, flight, or freeze, some of the ways that you can get out of that is to just start identifying where you're sabotaging yourself. And what I mean is this is probably going to be like a brain dump. Okay. So the first, I think of this like a pensive, you know, in Harry Potter, when Dumbledore is like carefully pulling um, memories out, I'm thinking how convenient, like, could I just like pull a bunch of stuff out, set it to the side, put it back in when I need it. But 
do a brain dump. And the first things that and might literally be a list, right? So the things that I am regretting right now, regret is a huge indicator of past sabotage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're like, oh, I stayed up say way that too again. late. Re say that again. Regret is regret a huge indicator of sabotage. Of past sabotage. Yeah. So That's the way deep. to figure out how you're sabotaging future you is to figure out how past you has sabotaged present you, which is okay. usually much easier to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it might be things like, I'm working on this big project right now and I don't like it. And past me said I would do it. And now I'm oh, stuck and I got to do it. Agreeing to do things. Uh-huh. Right. Or getting ready to leave your house because you committed to volunteer at a thing when you didn't actually have time to volunteer and you volunteered a month ago and you're like, oh, by a month from now, I'm going to have so much time. <laughs> Everything's going to be fine. Okay. <laughs> what are the things you're regretting right now? Is it staying up too late? Is this something you ate yesterday? Something you ate this morning? The second cup of coffee you had that you didn't actually need or the cup of coffee you didn't have because you didn't have time to have it, right? Or even further back, like maybe there's more deeply embedded in your life things that you might feel like we're sabotaged. And what I mean is you mentioned your health, Violet. So I work with people who a lot of times what we're trying to do is we're trying to get their health back on track and it's back on track and they can pinpoint a moment when it went right. awry. Right. Right. So that regret is a big indicator of, you know what? Oops. That was sabotage. So you just start dumping out a list. Boom, boom, boom. I stopped exercising. I've been eating like garbage. I don't meal plan anymore whatever. Okay. Well, now you have a list meal planning. That must be a thing that used to help you. That used to make you feel on track that used to make your body feel better. That used to give you better energy. Well, now that is a favor that you can do for future okay. you. You're saying do favors for future you like, like do yes. little things One, that are going to help yeah. future you. So you pinpoint, and I'm, I'm giving you like the three minute version of this. Right. But I do have a, a one hour free class that is this topic. Okay. And how three do you minutes find expanded that? into one hour? Um, you go to meljolly.com forward slash sabotage. Is that okay. right? Okay. And we'll we'll put these and we can and we can yeah, post yeah, this. We'll yeah, post it yeah. under the YouTube video um once it airs and we'll post it on the Facebook page and open dialogue Facebook page. Right. That is correct. It's meljolly.com forward slash sabotage. Good job, Mel. Okay. Way to remember your own links. See, past <laughs> okay. you made it an easy address for you to remember. Yes. So that yeah, she did. present you yeah. could recall it. Yeah. So that's once you get out of this place of drowning, right? So if you are drowning, brain dump. Uh, these are all the things I regret right now. Pick one thing. Right. Because if all of a sudden okay. you're like, oh, my gosh, I need a meal plan. I need to go to bed earlier and I need to drink more water. You try to do all and the things. All you if you try to do all the things, that's more sabotage. Right. Pick one thing. This is the favor I'm going to concentrate on right now. OK, this is the thing that I regret the most. I mean, usually just go with what hurts the most. Mm. Right. So if it's that you keep agreeing to this weekly commitment somewhere. And every week you're like, oh, you, then that's the you, thing. Are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> See, here I, I, thought she, I thought she was talking to me about another kind of uh, a, okay. a, a less she's often. she's talking to us both. And, and, talking to us both. You yeah. know what's happening is I'm talking to everybody because everybody that's does right. this. That's right. We, we all yeah. do it. Yep. We all do it. And especially I, I only coach women. That's not like a rule, but so far I've only coached women. And Does men already know everything. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, Violet, that's not nice. <laughs> Technically, my husband has taken my um, course as a as a as a tester. As a guinea pig. And I yeah, and I promise not to look at his notes because the course is really about digging into like your deep oh. personal feelings. So his his notes, his worksheets are somewhere. I don't know. I don't know what he's writing on them. That's where it's all great stuff about me. But that's the thing, <laughs> women. And especially somebody who might identify as a people pleaser, mm -hmm. right? Or a fixer or, or just the most reliable person they know. If any of those things sound familiar, then you're the kind of person who's going to be susceptible to 
overextending yourself, which is a form of sabotage, right? Eventually it affects your health. If you are right. tired, of, like if you're go, go, go all the time, taking care of other people, well, what happens? You get sick. You crash. Yeah. Right. You get tired. You forget to do something. You drop mm -hmm. the ball. Right. It's because you set future you up to fail. And we want to set yeah. future you up to win. Right. Yeah. That's great. One of the one of the and favors, let me say favors for future you can always be really simple too. Um, and if anybody takes the free class and they stay all the way to the end, I have a favor tracker, like some free planner pages that you can download, um, in addition to the workbook that you get for taking the class. But <laughs> One of the favors that I do for future Mel every day is at night, I pre-make my smoothie and I preset the animal food. So my animals are all very spoiled and they get refrigerated food. I take a cookie sheet. I set all the animal bowls on the cookie sheet and then I scoop the food in all the bowls and I stick the cookie sheet in the fridge. Okay, so where are the animals when you're doing this? Because mine would be like, oh, great, we're eating again. Right, we're, we're getting a Fabulous. bonus meal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so my husband and I have this disagreement because he won't do this for me. Like, he won't prep it for me. He's like, I would just do it in the morning. He's like, just do it in the morning. Well, it takes the same admit, amount of time. That's what but, I was going to say. I'm kind of your husband here. Like, it takes the same listen, amount of time out of your day. This works for me because... I am the kind of person that in the morning, I get lost. Okay. I get lost on my way to where I'm supposed to be going. <laughs> like if I'm supposed to be getting to work, if I'm supposed to be exercising, if I'm supposed to be going to walk the dogs, I'm the kind of person, I'm, I'm time sensitive. So I will look at the clock and I'll be like, it's been 45 minutes since I got out of bed. What have I been doing? I mean, how are the animals not fed? And I'll wander around. And what happens is in the morning uh, or really anytime I walk around, it's like I see things that need to be done. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So then I'm like putting in a load of laundry. Yep. You know, because I work from home. Right. You just throw it in and then you get it later. Or I'm like, you know, putting away some dishes or I'm loading the dishwasher, or I'm, you know, cleaning up this spot on the floor real quick. I get lost in the morning. Right, right. So any, any things that I can do that will streamline my morning, keep me from getting lost. It's not saving, it's not about saving the five minutes. Or even though it's the same amount of time, even though it it's makes the same your amount day of time. more efficient to do it right. at night mm -hmm. rather than in the morning. My brain is so awake in the morning and so ready to go that a i'm trying to get to the productive part of my morning as quickly as possible because it's right. like that makes seven sense. seven if you've ever read um when the scientific secrets of perfect timing by daniel pink he talks about how um for not not just morning people for most people a seven hours after you wake up you start having a dip hmm. right so i'm trying to get to my desk and get my productive creative deep work done before my dip hits um, but this is all, it's all to streamline my morning because at night my brain is tired. Right. I don't want to do anything. I right. see the spot on the floor where I'm not going to clean. I see the dishes in the sink, but I'm not putting them in the dishwasher. I won't get lost. I'm tired. I want to sit down. So it's kind of like looking at what is the, what is the best use of your time at that point. So in the mm -hmm. morning, the best use of your time is being productive and creative. In the mm -hmm. evening, the best use of your time may be presetting the dog food. These like, chore things, right? Right. That you're going to need to get done in the morning. There's no choice. Like you both know, you have to feed the animals in the morning. Like right. they, they won't let you live. No. Right? They you protest. Don't. Yeah. Right. You know, my husband's like, you can wait till I get up. <laughs> That's hilarious. You think they're going to let me walk around this house and not feed them? Yeah, you I have know. one that starts. I have one that like literally knows how to tell time. And he starts whining like they yeah. normally get fed at 830 in the morning. And at about 825, he starts doing the little dance by the kitchen and he starts whining like, mm -hmm. hey, are you coming? You coming? You're going to be here anytime yeah. soon. <laughs> All of mine can tell time. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. 
unfortunately they don't switch between like daylight savings time and uh, no you know it's always yeah yeah and no. if we stay up late like on a friday night or a saturday night like we'll stay up late like watching a movie or binge watching netflix or whatever and so we'll take them out at like one or two in the morning which they never usually go out at one or two in the morning but does that mean they get up later no no no, no. 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 see so <sighs> this is why violet i often don't stay up late like that's a choice that I make because I know future me will have to deal with the cats. Right. Waking me right. up. We'll have to deal with the dogs. Future me knows that there's going to be a mess in my house somewhere if I don't get up early enough to take the dogs out. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why I'm always like weighing the pros and cons. Right. So we're never going to be 100 percent on setting future us up for success. Sometimes the right choice is literally to let future you deal with it. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. So for me walking around in the morning the best choice would be to let future me deal with the laundry not morning me that needs to get you know get going and be productive yeah. yeah yeah then that would be the, the best choice for for the two of us present me and future me we gotta work together and I'm assuming, like, I mean, we're talking about, like, simple, like, daily task and routine things, but I'm assuming this also applies to kind of, like, big ticket items. Like, yeah. if I know that, you know, say, say that you're a writer who wants to leave your full-time job and be a full-time writer, well, then you need to be making decisions that carry you towards that. Or if I want to yes. build a house, then I need to be yes. thinking about, you know, trips I take or Starbucks purchases I make or whatever, like, whatever that future you the life that you want to build for future mm -hmm. you, I'm assuming it's big decisions as well as those little tiny, you know, the making the smoothie and yeah. making the dog food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're right on because uh, the thing about big dreams, like, first of all, a lot of people don't want to dream big. They don't want to, they have the natural inclination, right? So we are wired that way. And uh, Mel Robbins, do you guys know Mel Robbins of mm -hmm. the five second rule? Yeah. Okay. So one of the things she talks about has is about how your dreams are wired into your DNA. I'm less sciencey in my things, right? But I'm more spiritual. So I think that our dreams are, are given to us by our creator and they're right. there for a reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're divine. The, they're there for a reason. And I'm a big picture thinker, right? So in my mind, the reason is everything's supposed to be working together, right? So your dreams are there to guide you where you need to go. So you interact with the people that you need to interact with. So you create the things you need to create. You write the book that that person needs to read at the time they need to read it. I think it's silly to think we're not interconnected, right? right. Like we all impact each other all day long, right? It's the butterfly effect. So also, also, I am a sciencey enough to know that in the 12 week year, I'll never be able to flip to the page in time. But in the 12 week year, which I'm pointing because it's right here on my desk, <laughs> um, they talk about how having big dreams literally changes your brain chemistry in a positive way. OK, so we need big dreams. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about like visualizing this five star life for yourself. What's the biggest, best, brightest thing that you can imagine that you actually want? The tricky thing is here, it, it doesn't all come out immediately, right? So if anyone is interested, they can go to meljolly.com forward slash journal. And I have a free download. It's the Becoming Future You journal. And I ask questions to help you figure out what it is you want in these different areas of your life, your health, your finances, your romantic partnership, your family life, your location, where do you want to live? We have all these barriers between us and dreaming, right? So the first time you do this, I mean, I did this seven years ago. I found some questions in the internet, a free download, right? And I, I tried to fill it out. If you would look back at what I wrote down then, some of it's still true, but my dreams were a lot smaller back then right. because I was still thinking, what do my parents want for me? What, right. what does society tell me I should want? Right. So probably what am I allowed list, to want? What am I allowed to want? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. What do I feel ashamed for wanting? Right. If you right. look at my financial goals from back then, they're tiny because I thought that money was evil. Right. Mm -hmm. And it took me years to figure out that I thought money was evil. Oh, is that in there? 
oh shoot, I thought I didn't learn that in Catholic school. <laughs> so, but I picked it up just like everybody else. So in order to figure out your dreams, you have to keep working at it, right? And then you have to keep digging deeper. Is this what I actually want? How you dig deeper is by taking action, right? You do your first round of dreaming. And then, like you said, it influences. Okay, well, I apparently want to own a house in Florida. So what? maybe I need to stop going to Starbucks and start putting that money in a separate right. account that I'm going to call my, my real estate account. Right. Okay. We look at the mountain, which is the dreams. We're like, I'm going in that direction. That's where I want to go. But then you have to look back at where am I actually standing right now? Right. Where am I actually right now? What's the next step? So if the dream is leave your job, leave your full-time job and, and make, make a living as an author. Well, if the step you're standing on is you have zero books published, then you have to go from zero to one. That's right. the only step you need to worry about zero to one. Then when you're on one, then you look at the mountain again. Okay. I, still want to like work full time as an author. Okay. Now what's my next step? Right. And it might be that you need a partner with somebody that you need to be in an anthology. It might need, be that you need to get coaching, that you need to hire somebody to help you. The step might change, but, but like you said, like sometimes we think like there, there's the dream. I guess one day it's just going to show up. Mm -hmm. And you also have to be conscious of not taking steps off the path. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like a, like things that make your time and energy and money go in a different direction from, from where you want to go, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And what was I going to say? It was, uh, oh, okay. Digging deeper. So the way you dig deeper is that you go from zero to one, right? And you're like, I do not like writing books. That is actually not, that's not my dream. That's somebody else's dream. And that's okay. And you dream a new dream. It's not quitting if it wasn't meant to be your dream in the first place. Right, okay. right. So yeah. if you look at past Mel, at some point in our budget, there was a line item that was saving for a baby. Saving for a baby. And I spent all this time like trying to figure out like how can I freelance and actually like have a baby and like because my income is important to my family and all this figuring out. So finally, one day I was like, I don't actually want a baby. I don't want a baby. And, you know, talking to my husband, he's like, I don't want a baby either. That's good. <laughs> That's good that you were both yeah. on no, the same. We yeah. were both, we were both on the same page. Um, but it took both of us stepping away from the pressures, right? So we were getting right. pressure from family, the community, from family, and then right. also just from society. Like mm -hmm. at that point I was 30 and people were always like, you know, your clock will start ticking. I don't think it will. I don't think it, I don't want a baby. Like there's, but it took me actually taking steps towards, okay, we're going to save money. We're going to save money for this baby for me to finally go, oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. We don't want a baby. But then you had all that money you'd saved for the baby, right? <laughs> right? Well, that was the other thing too, though. We really struggled to save money for the baby. And that made me go, okay, why can't I put any money in this line item? Yeah. Oh, I don't want any money to go in there. because I'm afraid I'll have to have a baby. Oh, wait, I'm in charge of me. Yeah. So kind of naturally, I don't the have things to that do are, anything. kind of naturally, the things that are a priority for you probably are easier to work towards. Like it feels more natural to work towards them. And so if you're really yeah. stumbling working towards something, that may be something that you need to examine. Is that what you're kind of saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you just say, why? Why right. am I doing this? Why is the best question to start asking yourself? Because figuring out your why is also a motivator, right? Okay. So absolutely. Um, yeah. I think Jillian Michaels is my first coach. Because they do these old Jillian Michael DVDs and she'd say, you know, what is your why? What are you working for? Tadra knows. This is exactly yeah. what she sounds like. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, so why is a motivator? I got to know why I'm doing it. And this is, and let me like offer up a perfect example of this or support of your dreams are wired into your DNA or they're divinely placed. 
because my husband and I didn't have a baby, we adopted a 10 year old who needed a home. So eventually we felt called to adopt him. But if we'd had a baby, we never would have done that. Right. Right. So not only are your desires there for a reason, your lack of desires are mm -hmm. also there for a reason. I was not supposed right. to have a baby. Yeah. Yeah. It's that, that, uh, what is that? Uh, there's a Garth Brooks song. Um, I oh, thank God um, for unanswered prayers. Unanswered Cause prayers. like there's things yeah. that you really, really want in that moment, but then later mm -hmm. you figure out that like, that's, that's really wouldn't, wouldn't have worked yeah. out best. Yeah. So. Yep. All right. Exactly. Did I explain it well? Okay. Oh, Did you I get think it? so. Okay, I think so. <laughs> I lost you guys for just a second there. So. Yeah, we saw that you were frozen. We weren't sure if you true. were. You, you froze thought. for me. No, you froze for me. So, okay. you know, I must be there. Next Anyways. time, do dance hands. No dance hands. I'm behaving dance myself. <laughs> theater background. So, <laughs> there you go. You both have theater background, and my theater background was being a theater mom, which was where my talents lay. Also <laughs> important. There yeah. you go. There a lot you go. of curling hair. Yeah, true. Makeup, all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Very true. Okay, so I said earlier that I hear Mel's voice in my head a lot, even when we're not on calls. And, and <clears> so <throat> there are things that having worked, um, even before I knew Mel that well, but when we were planning the, the first Vink conference that I was involved in, um, that, that she was beginning to teach me. So there are a few things, and Mel, I'm just going to toss a few things to you sure. and just give me a brief like just like a, a knee jerk explanation yeah. of what it is. You got it. Okay. Okay. So the first one, um, train people the way you want to be treated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think this came up with you, Tadra, because I was like, stop answering calls in the middle of the night. <laughs> I mean, okay. You know? Let's just clarify that middle of the night for me was different than middle of the night for you. Right. Okay. okay. So, yeah. So let me back this up. So I, um, get a ton of emails. It's just, it's a part of my job and I will see that people are emailing at midnight, one o'clock in the morning. That's fine. If that's their work time. However, sometimes I see them say like, Oh, I woke up and checked my phone and now I'm answering this email. And I think, well, now you just taught everybody that even if they email you in the middle of the night, you're available, right? right. I train people that I'm not available. Mm -hmm. Like I don't answer emails at night. I don't check emails at night, but if I did, I wouldn't answer them because I wouldn't want somebody to think that they can email me in the middle of the night and get a right. response like that. Right. So now everybody knows, well, Mel is, slow ish at email. So you'll get a response in 24 to 48 hours. Right. I trained them that way on purpose. Exactly. And then that's been a good, that's been a good lesson for me. Yeah. And if Violet, if you volunteer too much, it's because you've <laughs> trained people that if they ask you, you will say yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I say, sure, I could do whatever you need, then yeah, they mm -hmm. actually yeah. ask me to do things that maybe I didn't want to do. Very exactly. True. Okay. So the next one is let it be easy. Mm. Um, I think I actually learned this one from Sarah Wendell from Smart Bitches Trashy Books. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that's who first, first taught me this, but she said she would ask herself the question, what would this look like if I let it be easy? Mm -hmm. And this resonated for me because I am an uh, overachiever sometimes. And I, I just want to make things like better and more exciting and, and flashier. So if I was going to a potluck uh, and I didn't have time to go, remember potlucks? That used mm -hmm. to be a yeah. thing. So I would be like, okay, Mel, we have a box of macaroni and cheese here. That is what we we're going to make. But then I would think, you know what? But it's always better if I put a little like fresh shredded cheese in it. So I'll do that. But actually, you know what? If I'm going to do fresh shredded cheese, I might as well just make a cheese sauce and make noodles separate. And then, you know what's better is baked mac and cheese when I put like the, the can of cheese soup in it. But I don't actually have the can of cheese soup or the breadcrumbs. So now I have to go to the store. And 10 minutes of making boxed mac and cheese turns into like three hours. You just so, told the story of my life, like right there. That's the story of my so, life. So, Violet, then ask yourself this question. 
what would it look like if I let it be easy? What if I let it be easy? What if instead of driving to the faraway grocery store, the cheaper milk or the, the whatchamacallit that I really want, I just went and got everything at the one store that's close by? Because the reality is the people on the other end of it rarely know the difference or, or rarely care about the difference right. between yes. the, yeah. what you provided. You know what I mean? Yeah. They didn't know you could make a baked macaroni and cheese no. with breadcrumbs and little onions. Unless you tell them. Unless, Unless you, you tell them. And right. <laughs> but see, I'm bad about doing that. If I do less, then I'm like, I am so sorry. I would have made the baked macaroni and cheese with onions, but I didn't have time. So this is the box macaroni, and I'm really sorry about that. So yeah. Okay, first then I make of all, them feel like they missed first out on of something. All, stop apologizing. <laughs> That's I'm not. horrible at apologizing. But, I, if you and I are walking together over a parking lot and you stub your toe, I'm going to be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Even though I had nothing to do with it. Okay. So listen, listen, Violet. Earlier you said, um, you said something about choosing where our energy goes, mm -hmm. right? So we were talking about these favors for future you and like, where's my energy need to go in the morning versus where does it need to go at night? Does your energy need to go into the mac and cheese? Or does your energy need to go into writing the book? Okay. Book. Right? Because you, it's always a choice. It's always a choice. Earlier today, I made the choice to run to the store instead of working on the project that I needed to work on. Was it the right choice? I actually do think it was the right choice. <laughs> um, but, but that was still a choice, right? right? It's not just time. It's energy. It's focus. Me right. setting up the dog food the night before is a choice because I know my focus will be disrupted. That makes so much sense. It you does. should really like coach this stuff. This is this is good stuff. <laughs> you funny. should share this with other people. You're so funny. <laughs> oh, brother. All right, one more. Um, where is it? Oh, easy win. Go for an easy win. Oh, okay. So because I've worked with women so extensively, uh, one of the things that I've noticed is that women will frequently not give themselves credit for anything. Right. So a woman will end the day and this, I shouldn't say just women, but a person might end the day thinking, you know, like, oh, I'm exhausted and I feel pulled in a million different directions. I didn't get anything done today. Right. Meanwhile, you took care of the animals. You actually did write some words because it's a habit that you write in your book every day. You clean the house, you cook dinner, you did the laundry, you ran this kid from that place and that other kid to the other place and you took somebody to the doctor and then somebody needed to go to the vet and then you called your parents and then, and you did all this stuff, all this stuff. But and then you think you didn't list. do anything. <laughs> then you think right. you didn't do anything because you didn't give yourself credit for prioritizing. Of course you prioritized your kids. Of course you prioritized the emergency vet visit. Of course you did. So setting yourself up to win and winning every day is about making a list of three things, your three priorities for the day. And if this, if you get those three things done, the day was a win. Yeah. Sometimes the things need to be keep my family alive, <laughs> clean some clothes in this house because everything's dirty and write 500 words in my book. Maybe that needs to be the three things. Yeah. And then you need to go, I did it. And everything else is gravy. And it's really important because it makes it easier to get up the next day and, yes. and do it over again. If you say, yeah. hey, look what I look what I did. It yeah. You feel defeated. So, you know, you feel confident. You don't feel defeated. Yes. Yeah. Tadra hates it when I try to make sports ball analogies because I don't understand <laughs> Just, sports. But just the but, fact that you called it sports ball analogies kind of <laughs> right. said that, but okay. Right. So I, you know, I do recognize winning streaks, right? So like if a baseball team is on a winning streak, right? Mm -hmm. Are they more likely or less likely to keep winning? They're more likely to keep winning because they have momentum. They have right. confidence. They have belief in themselves. Sometimes they believe there's some kind of like supernatural thing at work. And if they don't wash their clothes, that then, you know, they're, they're lucky clothes or they don't shave or whatever. The same thing is true for you. If you put yourself on a winning streak, like Todger said, you're more motivated when you wake up the next day, you right. start thinking of yourself you start changing your identity and you stop identifying as somebody who doesn't get anything done and you start identifying as a winner. Mm -hmm. And that's all the difference. It absolutely is. 
Absolutely. All right. Well, we are getting to the close of our 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 mail session. I hope everybody feels like 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 they've excited. Like, like Mel yelled at them. <laughs> so no. if someone like really enjoyed this, they wanted to hear more, they're intrigued by this, they feel like a little spark of, hey, maybe she could help me. How can we find Mel? I know one of the things that we kind of discussed earlier before we went on camera is Mondays with Mel. So tell us about that. Yeah. So Mondays with Mel is a free weekly class and coaching session that I do almost every Monday. Um, you can sign up at meljolly.com forward slash Monday. And it's really just an opportunity to start the week with a little positivity. And I talk about these things like the importance of winning every day and striving with satisfaction and finding joy and chasing your dreams because it's exhausting, mm -hmm. right? It's exhausting to dream big. It's vital. It's necessary for your growth, but it's exhausting to look at the mountain and be like, how am I That's a mountain. Ever, how am I ever going to get up there? Right. Yeah. So it's meant to be like I bring this level of energy possibly times five because there's like a lot of clapping and I make people dance. You don't have to dance. Right. <laughs> but Violet, you do have to dance when you come. I will dance. Um, there you go. Right. But it's it's like a, a loving kick in the rear on your Monday. There you, there you go. go. To get the week started off on a good note. Get the week yeah. started off positively. Yeah. Um, all right. What about your newsletter? Tell me about your newsletter. Okay, so if you go to meljolly.com forward slash links. You have a lot have of a, forward slashes. <laughs> yeah, I have a ton of freebies. I okay. have freebies for authors. So if you're an author and you want to do better with your newsletter, um, I've got freebies for that. You can find the button there. If you just want to ditch overwhelm, you can find the freebie there. If you want the journal, you can find everything at that link. But downloading any of my freebies is how you get onto my newsletter. Okay. And people know and what's that in I, your newsletter. What do people get if they sign up for your newsletter? A lot of positivity, a lot, a lot of positivity, of, yeah. a, lot, a, lot of a lot of cheerleading and a lot of questions because okay. I do know that my skill is asking you the question. Okay. You know, Violet, what do you need to do differently this week? Now that we've had this conversation, what idea did you have that you need to, to act on to implement? Okay. Um, and tell us a little bit more about your courses. I know you, you kind of mentioned the, the five-star course, um, but tell us a little bit about what other courses you have. If people yeah. wanted a little bit of a deeper dive than just a Monday chat. Yeah. So I have Unlock Your Five-Star Future, which is an eight-week immersive course that's designed to help you go from stuck to knowing what your dreams are and actually taking the action steps to get them. Okay. I was stuck which is why that's the place I started it in. Um, but the course is really set up to just be uniquely designed for you, right? I know what questions to ask you. So there is teaching and downloadable lessons, but a lot of it, the magic's in the power sheets, right? In the questions right. that I ask you. And then you get a couple of free calls with me when you do it. And I have it set up as buy one, gift one, so that people can come in with a buddy. So you buy a seat for yourself and then you gift a seat to a friend for free or, you know, go and have these like, I'm not dumb. I know people, are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but I set it up that way on purpose because I, I started seeing people go through together and I realized that that that's the secret. Right? Well, there's power in that. I think like obviously accountability, support, mm -hmm. uh, reinforcement, you know, like, you know what I mean? There's so yeah. much when you take a course with somebody yeah. that, that you get from that experience. So. And, I was so lonely when I started this journey because I'd surrounded myself with negative people. I literally mm. had no one in my life that I could talk to about any of the books I was reading, about the things I was trying. Like if I said affirmation to anyone in my life, they like A, wouldn't have known what I was talking about and B, probably would have thought I was crazy. Right, I told right. my best friend that I was going to become a positive person and she said, I don't want you to which turned out to be a gift because that's when I was like, <laughs> who have I surrounded myself with? Right, right. <laughs> but this is also why there's a Facebook group for the course as well. So even if you don't immediately have a buddy to gift your other seat to, you still get in the Facebook group. So it's all people that are like, yes, we can do it. And we talk about what we're struggling with and what we're working on and, and you know, what affirmations are working and what our big dreams are. Definitely.
that our, is that our closing note here? That was a, that was on a little, it sounded like the organ was playing us out of an old time right? revival. Right? Oscar there speech is go. done and we need yes, to get the stage now. <laughs> yeah, we're playing the music. That's right. We get our giant hook. Well, Mel, we are so appreciative that you took the time to be with us today, and we hope that everybody so who is listening and or watching will go. Um, Go to your website. If they go to your website, they can find all the forward slashes that they need. Yeah. Yeah. I've got all the, and they can always, you know, find me on Instagram or Facebook and um, I'm, I'm Miss Mel Jolly everywhere. Okay. And so they can find me there and they can be like, Mel, where's your free stuff? <laughs> there it is. It's all there. And we will also, we'll post a link to your website on the, an open dialogue Facebook page and YouTube page. And we'll also, the, forward slashes that you mentioned in this, we'll make sure that we share those. Yes. Thank Sounds you. Good. Sounds good. And we thank everybody for listening today and watching. Yes. And uh, we hope we're that happy you that you're here. Yes. Subscribe, please. We would love it if you subscribe so that you don't miss even one moment of our scintillating <laughs> discussions. Content. <laughs> we would Content. love to, um, like if you've been listening, we would love to hear from you. Like, what do you think is something you could do for future you? So comment yeah. on our Facebook page, um, an open dialogue. Whenever we post this on the Facebook page, comment and let us know what is something that you can do for future you. Yeah, definitely. I, I so. think we all have that. So thank and you so I'll, much. I'll pop in. So if anybody has questions or needs help figuring out what they can do, I will be there, there for them. There you go. Wonderful. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody, for being with us. We'll see you next Thanks, time. Thanks, everybody. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye.